Now today we will move into a very crucial point, something which is absolutely necessary for all of us to live well, but something which probably nobody is an authority to teach on, something without which progress and happiness is not possible, and yet something for which most of us struggle in life, and that word is relationships. You know, unless I have great relationships, I can never be happy. It's not possible for somebody to have very ordinary or bakwas relationships and actually be happy in life. Unless I have great relationships, I cannot be truly successful. I might be very intelligent, I might be very resourceful, but if I don't have great relationships, I don't have a great team, and if I don't have a great team, I cannot make so progress as much as I should be able to do in my life. A very, very crucial part of life is relationships. I remember some days back, my daughter went to meet somebody from IIM, and then the teacher was telling, we teachers have a lot of things inside, but how good we are able to teach depends on a few students inside the classroom. If we have a few good students inside the classroom, they know how to get the best out of us because they develop a great relationship with us. So even if I am a teacher, I need great relationships for me to perform exceptionally well. And if I am a great student, I need great relationships with my teachers for me to do well. Unfortunately, no in the world is this a subject. Even in human relationships, if some of you have done your graduation in HR or postgrad in HR, they will talk to you about how to deal with people, how to allocate people in different portfolios, but we are not taught how to get the best out of each other. Today, let's see if you can understand a little about relationships. From your perspective, it will help you to live a much better and more fulfilled life. And from the children's perspective, from the students inside the class perspective, if they understand <laughs> with whom to have great relationships and how to have great relationships, so much of the loss of focus which happens today will be prevented. Like we parked our car in the parking over there and from there we walked down over here and I saw about 100, 125 children just gossiping, talking, walking, giggling, pulling each other's legs and being sarcastic, throwing some tantrums, and parents are thinking they are studying. Instead of studying, they are studying. <laughs> For some reason, they think they need to do this. For some reason, they think if they don't do this, they will be out of sync. They themselves don't know what are they looking for, but there is something that they are looking for and a little lost and a vital portion of their life just gets lost. If only I realize what relationships is, whom to have in relationship, how to develop relationships, in case something goes wrong in a relationship, how to deal with that aspect in relationship, so much of my life will be on track. We went through a financial turmoil in our life but what helped us bounce back big is exceptional relationship with the family. <coughs> we have four brothers and sisters, mommy, papa, six of us together. One person can take a decision and everybody agrees and executes. I don't recollect ever the six of us having a fight between each other. There is tremendous bonding. <coughs> As a result of this, the greatest of tragedies have been overcome over a period of time, leaving behind no scars whatsoever. Great relationships are imperative, they are compulsory for anybody to live a great life. Do you agree with me? Yes. yes. So today let's have the session in a little different way. As you saw, the beginning was not by me. Somebody else began the session, so there will be a series of changes in today's session. Today I am not going to talk too much. I am going to ask you questions 
and then you will have to contribute and you will create the session together. All of us have had relationships, right? Yes. Human beings are not islands, none of us live alone. We are a landmass, we stay together. We are also called man is a social animal, which means relationships are everything to a human being. All of you have relationships, and all of you will have some key insights into relationships. One way of teaching is by talking and you listening. But this is more like the jug in the mug theory, which means I have a jug, you have a mug, whatever is there in the jug goes inside the mug. <laughs> But then this is not how relationships are formed. Relationships cannot be formed with me, the jug, giving something to you, the mug. It will be formed through exchange of ideas. There will be certain things which would have worked for you in the relationships. There are certain things which would have worked for me in relationships. I will give questions and I will look forward to your responses. Uh, first, we will listen to a few people who raise their hands. Then, I will search out a few treasures inside this audience. You know, treasure never reveals itself, you have to find the treasures. So then I will look around and find, okay, this friend of mine has not shared till now, let me listen to their sharing first. So, get ready. Almost all of us will have to talk today. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Question number one. When you relate to people, what do you love in them? You know there are certain qualities which drives us towards the person. Knowingly, unknowingly, there are certain things that we are searching for in a human being. Say for example, the quality that I search for in people is sincerity. I can do anything for people who are sincere. The second quality that I search for people is their ability to share. Are they people who just want to collect and hold? Or can they effortlessly share with people? The third thing that I look for people is courage. Do they have it in them to stand? Stand for what is right and fight the whole world if necessary. You know, these are the qualities which draws me towards a person. When I had to select whom to get married to, the person I married, was the person who was the most courageous of all the girls that I knew. <laughs> Later on, <laughs> it did create some complications. <laughs> but then everything was worth it. As a businessman, I was doing well and then when I decided to move into training, the quantity of money I was earning as a businessman was too high. And quantity of money I would earn in training would be too less. So let's say as a businessman I earn 30 lakhs plus, and in training I'll probably earn about one, one and a half lakhs max in a year. So it was almost about 5% of what my earnings were. But because my wife had courage, she told me, don't bother about even running the family, I will earn because I'm an educated girl, I will sustain the family, you follow your passion. Now I look for courage in people and I know this world will be created by people who have courage. This world won't be created by people who are meek or weak. So when I have to relate to people and when I want to get intimate to people, close to somebody, now these are the few qualities which really draws me towards them. A very essential factor for all of us to understand is what in people draws us towards them. It need not be these. It can be anything else. It can be sense of humor for all that it matters. You, you, you like people who make you laugh. You are drawn towards people who make you laugh. It can be people who are tremendous when it comes to raising resources. It can be somebody who is an exceptional communicator. Point. Write down three points that you look for in people when you want to relate to them. Three points. What is that quality that you look forward to in relationships? What are you searching for in people? Three qualities. Yes, ma'am. Intelligence. Intelligence. Okay, fair enough. Affection. 
Sincerity. Sincerity, fair enough. Affection. Affection. Affection, okay. Attitude. What attitude? Which attitude? Positive attitude. Positive attitude, fair enough. Honesty. Honesty, fair enough. Helping nature. Helping nature, fair enough. Good listener. Good listener, fair enough. Openness. Character. Character. Okay, fair enough. Openness. Openness to new ideas. Fair enough. Caring and loving. Caring and loving. Okay. Only caring would have been a weight lifter. <laughs> they can really carry. But caring and loving puts things in the right perspective. Hard worker. Hard worker, not hardly worker. <laughs> Same thing? Okay. What kind of behavior? Good. Good behavior. What is good behavior? <laughs> Helping kinds. Helping kinds. Fair. Dignity. Dignity. He has dignity. He gives dignity. <laughs> he has dignity. Self dignity. Okay. Fair enough. Talkative. Talkative. I like it. <laughs> I love it. So you must be liking me then. <laughs> and to talk it. Understanding capacity of that person. Understanding capacity. Understanding uh, you uh, or understanding uh, life. Uh, yeah, means he, if uh, somebody is talking, he can understand the problems also and something else. Ah, uh, okay. So it means he must be a great listener. <laughs> right? But without great listener, you cannot be a great un understanding. Huh? They can't look at you and say, Ek minna sab <laughs> That doesn't work. So they have to be great listeners. Yeah, I thought. I saw another friend. Yeah. Funny. Funny? Okay. So since they are two friends together, funny and talkative. Quality of appreciating good things. Quality of appreciating good things, yes. Somebody who inspires you to do better and better. Ah, somebody who inspires you. Inspires you by what? By talking or by their own life? By their life and also by inspiring you by giving you okay. motivation. Okay, by communication as well as by living, right? Living, yes. Okay, fair enough. Yes? He should enjoy my company, he or she. He or she company. should enjoy my company. I like that. You know, I'm reminded of something. <laughs> These two people were very happily married and friends have never seen them fight among themselves at all. And they are unlike a couple because almost every couple fights. And if they are not fighting, then they are couples but to somebody else. <laughs> now and then, but these two never fought, never ever fought. So it is a mystery to all the friends, how come these two don't fight at all? One day, one of the girls with a lot of strength went and asked the guy, how come you never fight with your wife? He said, it's very simple. We got married and we went to Materan and uh, we decided to walk up the horse. And as we were walking up, the horse did something like this. And my wife told the horse, hey, stay, stay properly. I'm telling you once. He didn't listen. After some time, again he did like that. Second time I said, final time I'm telling you, walk properly. Horse, he didn't understand. After some time, again the horse did like this. The wife got down, shot the horse. <laughs> After the sign bank, the husband says, Are you mad? You've just shot the poor horse. She told him, I'm saying you properly. <laughs> he said, So you understand why we never had a fight? <laughs> okay. Anything else you are looking forward to in relationships? Patience. Yes, my friend. Greens, yeah? Patience. Patience, okay. Both of you patience. 
That's why they were so patient saying, hey, you're bullying, you're bullying. By example. Trust. 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 Isn't it so important, trust? Yes. I'm looking for trust in relationships. Fair enough? Say enthusiasm, you know. Not many people like to have dull people around them. We look forward to people with a lot of enthusiasm. Okay, what else? I like people who are compassionate and, uh, you know, sensitive enough to understand uh, the others around them. Yes, compassionate and sensitive. Faithfulness and also person should, person should have humor. Faithfulness and a sense of humor, it should have some fun. Okay, yes. Wavelength and communication. Wavelength should meet, right? And communication. Okay, fair enough. Persons who have good decision power, decision making people. Yeah. And people who can use the strategy for the benefit of all the organization. Yeah, good decision maker, right? Okay, and that's crucial, good decision maker. Giving respect to everyone at every moment of life. Giving respect to everyone at every moment of life. Person who gives us a proper guidance, and sometimes maybe I'm wrong, so he is telling that me you are wrong, you're like this. Yeah, somebody who can guide us properly all the time. Okay, fair enough. Simple question. How many of these qualities do we have? We have all? No. If you have all, then namaste. <laughs> Special namaste. But why we did this is to understand what somebody else is searching for in us. So we are saying we need people to be kind. Others are also searching in us, somebody who is kind. We want people to be good decision makers, somebody is searching for the same. We want people to be humorous, somebody is searching for the same. Crucial. Two things before we take the session into a different direction. Point number one. One reason why many people cannot get along well with each other is because we want to change the other person. We are in a hurry to change the other person. We are behind their life that they should change. And the area where we want them to change is under the radar all the time. Whatever they do, if they have not changed where we want them to change, all the other developments to us is almost like insignificant. We take everything else for granted. But this change that we want is what we keep on harping on. Sometimes this incessant focus on wanting the other person to change only in one aspect of life takes away the joy, the excitement, the depth of everything else which is good in that person. <coughs> let's, let's say for example, I have a friend of mine whose uh, husband drinks. Now he might have hundred different good things, but let's say he consumes alcohol three times a week. Now the girl is not comfortable with this idea of the husband drinking alcohol. She is scared. What if he becomes an alcoholic? What if a lot of money is lost over there? And what if the circle of friends is a bad thing? She is very insecure. Plus her insecurity is what if the children pick up this habit from the father? Now this guy may be an alcoholic or drinking alcohol, not yet an alcoholic. But in him there are also hundred good qualities. He might be giving the wife a lot of freedom to work. He might be treating her with a lot of dignity. He might be taking care of his inverse beautifully well. He might be an extraordinary father to the children. He might create a great atmosphere at home when he is there at home. But one aspect of his life, he drinks. Now here the wife expects that he should give up on this thing called drinking. One of the laws of relationship is you cannot change people without their cooperation. In a non-living thing, you don't need their cooperation for change to happen. So if I have to cut the speed of wood, I don't need the cooperation of wood. I just need an instrument and I can change it. 
but human mind habits now here we need the cooperation of the other person to bring about a change if they don't cooperate we can say the same thing thousand times but they might become rude they might become the rebels in fact they might take a decision ye to ab main chhodne wala hi nahi hai to jo karna hai tu kar le so we actually push people away from us instead of bringing them towards us so one of the key in great relationships is to understand if i need to change people if i need to transform people i need their cooperation <coughs> which means my behavior towards them has to be in a way which will make it easy for them to cooperate with me i cannot demand a change i cannot command a change i can only make them change by them liking me or wanting to do something for my sake So you want to bring a change in some people? Ask yourself this question: What approach should I take? Because of which they will want to change. Simple. Now this will require you to think. Some of us are used to a particular approach. Sometimes it's the loudness of the voice. Sometimes it's a threat that we have a using. ये अगर ऐसा नहीं किया ना तो मैं ऐसा कर डालूँ. Sometimes it's all the time carrot and stick approach. If you do this, I will do this. If you don't do this, I won't do this. So many parents, so many teachers attempt to relate to the children using these methods. For some time it might work, but a transformation does not happen inside that person. what we need to think is all the time what approach to take so that the other person will want to develop the change inside them this is rule number 1 of relationships let's say i am not in a mood to go out and have my dinner and my wife is dressed to kill <laughs> ready to go out for dinner then if i want her to change i will have to take an approach which excites her if not then i have to be ready to change <laughs> so simple as that so rule number 1 in relationships is i cannot change another human being without their cooperation now look into it from your children's perspective in the classroom you want somebody to write neatly you want somebody to dress better you want people to come on time you want them to do their homework before time you want them to ensure that they are disciplined inside the classroom unless they want to change you cannot change them to a child now that is what creates a classic teacher her ability or the other person to want rule number 2 human beings are not products of logic <coughs> we are products of emotions so relationships are not based on agreements but it is based to understand human beings are not products of logic they are products of emotions <coughs> so relationships cannot be based on agreement it has to be based on understandings <coughs> why do partnerships break not because there was no agreement agreement was there what went for the toss Understanding event for us. That's why partnerships break. Agreement was there. Understanding was not there. <laughs> so when do relationships break? When understandings go for us. So there is no point in fighting in a relationship, reminding about agreements. 
तुमने ये बोला था वेट इज अग्रीमेंट वॉट इज दी अंडरस्टैंडिंग डीपर इन टू दिस क्लैरिटी एंड देन वी कम बैक टू चिल्ड्रन आई यू रेडी अदर्स आई यू रेडी Not hearing your voice today. Yes, sir. <laughs> I was missing that. <laughs> Logic means what? The same thing will bring the same result. That's logic. I put water to heat on the gas stove. It will heat. That's logic. If I speak in the mic. my voice will be magnified now this is logic if i switch on those lights if the electricity is going through lights will come on and very soon there will be heat and brightness now this is logic this hall is made how many years ago sir this hall 5 5 five. Five years ago five okay years. okay let's say 5 years let's say 5 years Now in five years, this hall would have been used how many times? So many times. So every year how many times? Hundred days. Every year hundred times. More than that. More. Let's say hundred. So five years, one thousand five hundred times. Now one thousand five hundred times, the switch to this light would have remained constant. The light would have never said, "Hey, what are you doing? One switch, both are wrong. Let's change it." <laughs> You think it would? Yeah. Happily it goes on, and happily it doesn't function. <laughs> Now this is called logic. logic. Is there anybody here who loves Rasagullas? Yeah. Rasagullas? Yes. Remember your name? Swarupa. Swarupa? Yes. Okay, her name is Swarupa. Sir, what's your name? Rama Krishna. Rama. <laughs> Now she loves Rasagullas. Uh, will you feed her Rasagullas? <laughs> yes, sir. Happy, happy. Ah, okay. So today one deal has been done. Today's teachers say, <laughs> Ram Krishna is going to invite Swarupa to his house, <laughs> and Swarupa will go there on a rasgulla party. <laughs> so you married? Yes. <laughs> happy married. Happy. That that's the important question. <laughs> Now let's assume the scenario. Swarupa goes to Ramakrishna's house. She rings the doorbell. Ramakrishna opens. The house is very beautifully set. You know when guests come home, our own house looks like somebody else's house. We are up now. Very big. It's so beautiful. Till yesterday, we were thinking about changing something. <laughs> Suddenly our home house is looking good. So Swarupa has come, and there are fellow teachers, and there are a lot of things to talk about. Keep moving, movement, and what they have been doing inside the classroom, and how beautifully things were going. And uh, since he is a very good host, he has bought those good quality, big, authentic Bengali rasagulla. <laughs> Not that neighbouring ka dukan ka tapri. <laughs> real good, real good. Sir, remember all this, huh? <laughs> And he brings that large plate. You know, Bengali rasagulla. Each rasagulla is almost 250 grams in weight. These normal ones are 60, 70, 80 grams. Authentic Bengali rasagulla. Oh, beach me under ilaichi, thoda sa uske sange vista vista me na. Classic rasagulla. He takes those two, puts it on a plate, along with that proper spoon. You know, there are three, four sizes of spoons. So the right kind of spoon, and he says. Swarupa, Swarupa is a rasagulla. He says, "Wow, thank you so much." And slowly she starts eating, and she finishes it up fast. Two big ones. Now Krishna's wife was busy inside the kitchen, and then she comes out and says, "Oh, this is that lady. Kya ulas rasagulla? Okay, okay, nice, nice. Come, come, come." And she takes two more. And gives it to her on the plate. Says, "Look how." 
सोच बस ऐसे दो बहुत हो गया आई लव रसगुल्ला बट देर इज सम इंटरनल कैपेसिटी इसे ऐसे कैसे हो सकता है आप पहली बार खाए हो मेरे हाथ से तो कुछ खाया नहीं आपने आपको तो लेना ही पड़ेगा और ये थोड़े ना लेके आया है तो ऑर्डर करते हैं लेके तो मैं आई तो मेरे हाथ से तो लेना ही पड़ेगा इज टू नाउ डू थिंग सो रूपए लुकिंग एट इट विद लॉर्ड ऑफ लव अफेक्शन जॉय एक्सटसी her smile becomes a little smaller right <laughs> See? now the speed of the two rasgulla going inside is dramatically slow she is wishing in one everything disappears but it's not first two rasgulla she took about 6 minutes second two rasgulla she taken about 20 minutes doorbell rings and i come in the house Hey, how are you? All of you having a good time? He is not invited me, but <laughs> I am a stranger. Sir, I was brought up in Calcutta, so Rasgulla is in there. You can't keep the two of them away. <laughs> so I go there and I hug him and I say, "How? You know, in India, when a guest comes home, you can't throw them out." <laughs> That's the beauty of being an Indian, staying in India. You go to US, they might ask you at the door, "Yes, what do you want?" <laughs> in India, nobody asks like that. Whether you like it or not, then you say, "Aaja." <laughs> I also come inside, and I say, "Where is Swarupa?" Ah, oh, there she is sitting. My turn. I take one plate, put two rasgullas, and I tell her, "Eat." <laughs> What do you think is Swarupa's status now? <laughs> very excited, very happy. She said, "Me na dil me char kha gaya." I said, "You, you can't tell me no." <laughs> Whatever till now I have given in KMM, you have taken. This also you have to take. So <laughs> eat. Poor girl now. Maybe tears have started coming. <laughs> What does this mean? For five years, the mind does not complain about the switch. In the morning, when she went there, sir, what is the date, sir? <laughs> date date when you are invited her tomorrow ah sir tomorrow they better to know it and keep no because i also roll there <laughs> so that day in the morning when she went there rasgulla was on pleasure after four i've gone in same rasgulla now is punishment not pleasure torture punishment pain which means we are not products of logic logic means everything should have made me function the same way but it did not my emotions keep on changing hence my needs keep on changing the way i look at things keep on changing there are times when i miss my wife and i will want to be with her and there will be times when i want to be with anybody but her <laughs> There will be time when I listen to music, and there is time when I want silence. There are times when I want to be at home, and there are times when I want to be out with nature. Logic means everything has to be the same way. But you and me are not products of logic. We are products of emotions. Our emotions keep on changing. Hence, in relationships, understand this. You are not relating to a product of logic. You are relating to a product of, Emotions. which means logically you cannot build a relationship. Logically, you and me both know that we should exercise and remain fit. I did a program on Sunday for 125 couples. Where both the partners compulsorily must be 50 years old and alive. So we had about 250 people in the audience, and one of the questions which they gave to me was, "We are already 65. Now what to do with life? There is no driving force. We have retired from work. Sab ho gaya. Bachcho ki shaadi bhi ho gayi, pote bhi ho gaye. Abhi kya karne ka life se? Both boring hai." And I told them, "Why are you looking at the life which is already gone? 
Why don't you look at life which is there ahead of you? Have you heard of a person called Foja Singh? Who is 101? And he participates in marathons. Every year he runs in three marathons. At the age of 101, he is running 42 kilometers. Some of my friends over here, 21 kilometers, what do you say? <laughs> 42. And he's still going strong. Warren Buffet, 85. Second richest man in this world. And he's still the chairman. He still comes and works for 10 hours every day. So as then, you are 65. Even if you have to live till Warren Buffett, 20 years, for 20 years so much can be done. So don't look at 65 which has gone, look at the 20 which is coming. And immediately one person said, why 20? I am looking to the next 36. <laughs> he said, maybe century my life. And I asked them, okay, how many of you are going to hit century? Tell me. Almost everybody's hand went up. So okay, next year invite me again and I must see a fitter gathering and one request to all of you to prove to yourself you are sincere about living till 100 plus from today onwards drop white sugar white sugar is poison <coughs> doesn't help you want sweet eat natural sweet eat, eat fruits eat banana eat an apple it will give you the sweet that body requires you don't have to take white sugar that day in the lunch they had rubbery Many of them bought their plates and showed to me, no rubber. <laughs> what changed? 65 years old, it was looking like pain to them. They are already 65, now what to do? 101, now suddenly that looks like a target which is worth it. Logically nothing has changed, but the emotions have changed. <coughs> So the whole game of relationships is are you a source of pleasure to a person or are you a source of play? It's not a question of how much you are right or how much you are wrong. Are you pleasure or are you pain? That's the question. If I am a source of pleasure to your life, even if I don't know enough, you will want me in your life. That's why some of us say sense of humor source of pleasure. Somebody to guide me, source of pleasure. Somebody who can motivate me, source of pleasure. Somebody who is trustworthy, a trustworthy person is a source of pleasure. All the qualities that we talk about are qualities which to us in them will be a source of pleasure. I want my child to listen to me. Am I a source of pleasure to my child or am I a painful entity to my child? I want the children in my class to listen to me. Am I a source of pain or am I a source of pleasure in their life? So sometimes parents will complain to me and tell me, Narayan, what you say, we have been telling the same thing to our children. They listen to you, they don't listen to me. <coughs> There's only one simple difference. You look like a source of pain to them. I look like a source of pleasure to them. Same thing said by me, they listen. Same thing said by you, they don't listen. The way you communicate is harsh, even if it is the same substance which I am giving to them. I am also telling them, exercise, but the way I say it, they are thrilled. But how you say is, hey, bevku, pata ne, jindhi hume kya karega, ek dam sade la insane, bol bol ke parishan ho gaya, sunta nahi hai, baap ka khata rata hai, nala hai, kala, kam se kam exercise to kar. <laughs> now this is how you tell them exercise. <laughs> And I tell them, experience exercise tomorrow and see if you can stay fresh the whole day. You know, your attention will be very high. You will be able to be much more productive. And if you can beat your sleep, get up and go out, you will actually believe you can achieve anything in life. You don't have to depend on others to motivate you. Your greater source of motivation will be within you. And I would love it if you can experience it just for one day. If you feel very bad about exercising, then next day you will not ask me to exercise. 
एक दिन के लिए कर सकते ही गोज एक्सरसाइज एंड सेज आई रियली एंजॉय इट थैंक यू सो मच एंड ही गोज एंड टेल्स हिज फादर एक्सरसाइज बाप रे हां पैसा लेके आगे सीखेगा और क्या करेगा नाला है तौला तौला दे मेरा द पॉइंट इज व्हाट अंडरस्टैंड माय फ्रेंड्स द पॉइंट इज नॉट अबाउट राइट एंड रॉन्ग you and me both know what is right and what is wrong the point is the way you say it, are you a source of pain or are you a source of pleasure you want to get the best out of the children you will have to think how to be a source of pleasure in their life different children will take it differently For some appreciation will matter. For some, maybe you have to create a little distance and create in them a sense of longing. For some, maybe a challenge will work, but you have to find out what will work with your children. You know, when we are told, "Then why don't you send your students to take the class in the school?" We can, but these things only you will know. We won't know. We will talk and come. We will be the jug in the mug. But in your case, you will be able to create a beautiful concussion. Which we will not be able to create. So rule number one of relationships is I cannot change people without their cooperation. And rule number two of relationships is people are not products of logic. So don't go on telling them, "Ye kar, ye mat kar, ye kar, mat kar." And for heaven's sake, don't make that dialogue. Kitni baar tum ko ek hi cheez bolo. This is the most ridiculous statement anybody can make to somebody. logic by itself does not work it has to be associated with the right kind of emotions done yes yes now questions for you this is the base i have to give you the base i have given the base now everything else will be together question how to develop relationship Think from your perspective and the perspective of the children. If you have to develop a relationship, what would you do? Pick any one person in your mind, and keeping that person in mind, write down the answer. If I have to develop a relationship, what would I do, or what should I do? <laughs> you will need to learn how to develop relationships how will you develop relationships okay let's listen <laughs> what do you think you need to do to develop relationships yes ma'am proper communication proper communication okay i'll elaborate on later on what is actually proper communication You were saying something? No. Okay, sir, uh, I have taken this as uh, if I look at my children's point of view. If I want to develop a good relation with my children, first I would like to know exactly what the problem the child is having. Yeah. Be to that level. Try to understand. Keep yourself in that place. Mm-hmm. Win the child's heart, and then I will. The child will start sharing the problems with you. So this is how I would love to share my relation with the child, so the child comes and trusts in with me and starts sharing everything. Okay, beautiful. Now in psychology we call it as OPV. OPV means other person's view. Hmm? So it's as simple as OPV. Do I have the ability to OPV understand other person's view? How to do that? I'll explain to you. <coughs> I wanted to say yes. about uh, uh, when I begin uh, developing relationship, <coughs> I must first see the person's emotions and feelings, and and uh, then understand that person in that situation. Yes. At this time, the child is very happy. Uh, then I rejoice with her. When she is sad, you can make out by her facial expression or not. She is depressed. Then I, uh, what is happening to you? Uh, tell me. Tell me. I am ready to listen. I have time for you. Like that. Yes, make them feel important. Be concerned. 
again coming to let me understand the other person's views. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, is anybody expecting help from uh, you then? Uh, yeah, yeah, should give that unconditionally. Okay. I will do that. <laughs> Okay, so we are again coming to understand the other person's view and deal with the situation accordingly. Fair enough. Being cooperative. Cooperative, beautiful. Cheerful personality. Cheerful personality, okay. Appreciate the person very honestly. Appreciate them honestly, fair enough. Give them time for the improvement of that person. Give them the required time for improvement, okay? If I want to grow a tree, it cannot happen in five days. I need to give it the required time. Respect the views of the other person. Respect the views of the other person, okay? Compromise. Compromise? <laughs> okay. It's an interesting word, compromise. Okay, before we go further, it's, it's beautiful to see in your hands. I'll come back to you again. But I heard one word called cooperate. I heard one word called compromise. Now there is a difference between those two words. What is cooperate? Probably doing the same thing that somebody is wanting to do and being happy in the process. It makes no difference to me, kind of an attitude. The compromise is, I am doing the same thing but unhappily carrying a regret in my heart. So compromise is actually a weakness. It will put me away in a relationship. Cooperation is beautiful. It will put me closer to a person in a relationship. So cooperation is brilliant, compromise over a period of time creates a distance. <laughs> Forgive people for their mistakes. Okay, beautiful. I'm coming back to a question later on. In there, uh, this answer will come back again. Hmm? Okay, let me put it this way. Now I'll be speaking to you from the perspective of children keeping in mind how you need to take this session for the children inside the classroom. <coughs> the key to developing a great relationship is to be a contributor and not a consumer. The key to any great relationship is giving more than receiving. So the key to developing a relationship is to be a contributor. I cannot be a consumer and develop the relationship. I need to be a contributor and develop the relationship. Why is our relationship with the teachers filled with so much gratitude? Because when we look back, we realize, compared to what we have given to the teachers, what we have taken from the teachers is much higher. With parents also, after a certain age, we start giving to them consistently. And we stop taking from them. So time can come when we believe we have done so much for our parents. But with our teachers, the relationship is always about receiving, 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 receiving. There is hardly any contribution by the children in the life of the teachers. Hence, they listen to the teachers more than they listen to the parents. So some of you who are teachers over here, you will find your children in the classroom listen to you more than children in your own home. <laughs> Why? Because at home it's the same thing. You are expecting so much from your children. They are thinking I'm doing this for also for my mother, that also for my mother. So it kind of equates itself. So a way to build relationships, develop relationships is by being a contributor and not a consumer. Now that is what any good friendship is also all about. There is a competition to contribute to each other's life instead of consuming from each other's life. So when the children who are there in class 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, any at any stage have to know whether the relationship is good for them or not, a very simple way to find out is what is the intention of the other person in the relationship with you? Is there intention to consume or is there intention to contribute? <coughs> What are they contributing to your life and what are they consuming from you in your life? Are they behind your money? Are they behind your vehicle? Are they just wanting your group, your company for some reasons? 
or is it that they are genuinely interested in giving something to you in turn? How to find out whether a relationship is worth pursuing or not? How much does the other person want to contribute in your life? Very simple. If you are a contributor, you have to ask yourself how to contribute. Now that's a different question. There can be thousand ways to contribute. But the intention in any great relationship is how is it that I can be a contributor? The intention in any bad, average, normal, good for nothing relationship is how is it that I can consume? In business, when the customer finds the money that I have given is less in value, the product that I have received is much higher in value, he sees the person from whom he is bought as a contributor. So he likes it, there is loyalty in that relationship. When the customer feels they have given so much money but I have not gotten what the value of my money was, now he cannot be a loyal customer, he looks for alternatives. So the key to any relationship <coughs> is my ability to be a contributor and not just a consumer. The key to a great person is, he goes on contributing, not expecting anything in turn. So you come, okay, I'll give to you, value You come, take from me and go, value it. Now that's what a greatness, a great human being is all about. Keeping on contributing without expecting anything for themselves in turn. Now this is the key to any great relationship. You will explain it to children beautifully well. A very simple way to find out whether somebody is good for them or not is to find out they are contributors or consumers. All of you with me? Yes, sir. Right now in your life also analyze. Are there people who only think of consuming from you? If yes, then it's time for you to create a distance. There are some shameless consumers. Yes. They don't mind asking. And whenever they are in need, they will suddenly come to you. And you become a little soft and give to them when they don't deserve it. Tomorrow when they don't come, you feel miserable. <laughs> so what's the point? Nurture and develop those relationships where they feel like contributing to you, you feel like contributing to them. That leads to a beautiful, deep, true, honest, valuable, worth-sustaining relationships. If you are a person who believes in him, how much he has contributed to your life? And a very simple question, now that you have given so much to me, how much should I give back to you? Now you don't need it, but there are enough people so through me, let your glory reach as many people as possible. Then you are a right devotee, otherwise you are not. So the key to a great relationship is contribute and not consume. Whatever happens, you are a very good human being. If you can say, in every relationship of my life, I will be a contributor and not a consumer. In your class, for your children, if this statement becomes a part of their life, you have created a very beautiful character. You have created a leader. Can you and me say, in my life, in every relationship, I am going to be a contributor, I am not going to be a consumer. If it's my relationship with my teachers, I can't give to them anything. But through my performances, can I create in their heart delight? And that delight is my way of telling them, ma'am, I am also a contributor in your life because this is what I can contribute. I can't give you knowledge. I can't give you money. That will not be right because what you do for me cannot be ever equated in money. But I, can I create delight in your life? Can I create moments of joy in your life? Can that be done? Yes. Now, can you inspire the children inside the classroom to do the same? Yes. Can you tell them, what I need from you is this. I will contribute in your life with all clarity, all knowledge that you want. 
you contribute in my life by creating for me moments of joy, moments of rapture, moments of delight. Let this is let this be the way by which the relationship becomes deeper and stronger. What do you say? So in every relationship of a life, make this bold proclamation today. In every relationship of my life, I am going to be a contributor and not a consumer. Which means I will take, but I'll give more. I need something from you, I'll ask, with the intention to give you much more. So I take from the money one lakh, but give to the bank one lakh two thousand rupees. That two thousand rupees is extra. That's my contribution to the bank. That is when the bank also finds it interesting. That's why it's called interest. That's why it's interest. So when keep moving movement gives you something, what do we want from you? Some delight. Some implementations, some moments of joy, some stories of transformation. Somewhere can Arpita be created? Now she went to US, there she was teaching math, she's become an expert in math, she came back to India, and even now she wants to be a teacher and she's a teacher right now. Now that's what a teacher wants, what else the teacher wants? So please ensure, in your life, from today onwards, in every relationship, you are going to be a contributor and not just a consumer. The attempt is to make relationships and the secrets of relationship very simple. If you just have this as a philosophy, everything else will set into place. And remember, Lene me koi sharm nahi. Lekin jitna liya usse jada dene ka. Many lega, many lega, they are also not able to contribute. The relationship will break down. Let them give, but return. Done? Yes. You clear with this philosophy? Yes. Second thing by which I develop relationships is communication. Relationships cannot be developed through intentions. I can't intend to have a great relationship, look at you, and relationship becomes very good. It has to be developed through communication. What actually is communication? I'll explain to you. There are four steps. What actually is communication? Communication involves four things. Point number one, listening. Right on these four points. Point number one, listening. Point number two is thinking. Attempting to understand the other person's point of view is thinking. Point number three is talking. And point number four is doing. What I do also communicates. Now these are four aspects of communication which builds a relationship. There are different kinds of listening. One is called passive listening, which many husbands practice late in the night when they are tired. And the wife is saying, Suno. Exactly. He says, Suno, he says, Bol. And after some time, she can hear. <laughs> hey, you slept? I'm not completed. Wake up now. Listen now. Ah, hold for my sundar. Poor fellow is struggling to be awake. Now, this is passive listening. You know, sometimes I am talking and somebody else is eating. Now, that's passive listening. Sometimes when I am talking and you are talking to your neighbor. Now, that is? What is that, sir? Passive, passive listening. Now you can see it and you know what happens in your classroom. When you're talking, sometimes the student is not looking at you and he's disinterested. And he look at me, listen to me. No, I am listening. Now that is passive listening. Purely because they are present in that environment, something is being picked up by their ears, but they are not focused on that. Now that is called passive listening. 
when I'm walking on the road and something is happening at the Ganpati Mandal over there, I'm not focused on listening to that, but those voices do come to me. Now that is passive listening. Passive listening never builds a relationship. It's a very decent way of saying, I don't care. It's a very decent way of saying, right now you are not my priority. It's a very decent way of saying, if you will shut up, I will be grateful to you. Decent. You know, when we have this program called Sales Seminar, and when we are telling people on how to sell, we tell them, never make a presentation to a customer who is practicing passive listening with you. Which means if the customer is searching for something in the drawer and he says, Tum bolo, main sun hai. don't do that. So if mommy is cooking something and if the child is saying, mommy, mere ye karne ka hai, she is passive listening. She won't be able to take the right decision at that point of time. When somebody at home is watching TV and you are keeping on talking, they are saying, Tum bolo, main sun hai. <laughs> And like that they get lost in the TV serial. After they said, did you say that? Passive listener. In many relationships, just because we have to tolerate the other, we have become experts in passive listening. <laughs> Typically, it might be happening in the, the meeting that you have with the college management or the school management. Management committee, something is happening. And you are listening. That is the time art and craft comes into play. <laughs> You start making something with something you have. <laughs> Remember the kerchief? Yeah. Or you might take a pen and draw something. Are you listening? Yes. <laughs> Passive listening. Now this never ever builds relationships. The other is active listening. When you are totally with that person. Active listening is also called involved listening. It's a little better than active listening. I'll tell you what is the small difference between the two. Active listening is you are listening very well. You know, right now if some of you are sleepy, you are doing passive listening. And suddenly I say active listening. <laughs> Not your fault. So it's okay, don't feel embarrassed, don't feel guilty. Because of these materials only I form my sessions. <laughs> Otherwise I wouldn't know how to take a session. Active listening is one-way communication. The other person is talking and you're listening very attentively. Involved listening is when you also make those necessary sounds. Like that. <laughs> mm. Hmm. Huh? Oh. Acha? Kya? You, you are giving the other person a little more excitement and momentum to continue. You are making them feel that they are talking some sense. Now this becomes involved listening. Once in a way also asking questions. Are you sure? Kya baat hai? Suchi? Huh? So you give them your expressions, your emotions, then it becomes involved listening. So for example, when I say something and you laugh, now what is that? Involved listening. When you listen, it look mal You're listening actively but not involved. And relationships are built when there is involved listening. The worst is passive. Better is active, but the desire is involved listening. Now, involved listening is an art and it also shows I am actually interested in you and what you are saying. Engagement period? Yet <laughs> some peak involved listening. Post marriage, active. 15 years into marriage, passive. 25, you are wondering why you got married in the first place. 
Another 25 years and you wonder who you can marry. <laughs> Key to great relationships is involved listening. Ask them questions for which they can talk something which gets you involved. You need not go through torture. If you don't like, don't say, ah ha. Know how to direct the communication. But involved listening is what builds relationships. One experience of involved listening and the memory lasts for a long time. Passive listening, you might forget it the moment it gets completed. Active listening for a few more days. Involved listening is what creates memories. When you go to see movies, how many of you take notepads with you to remember the dialogue? Anyone? Notepads? <laughs> So when Salman Khan comes on the stage, what do you do? Hey, dialogue I love you, just. What are you doing at that point of time? In fact, as he's talking, you are also talking. He's not listening, but you are totally involved. In fact, if Aishwarya Rai is running, and Amrish Puri is behind her, and you are rooting for Aishwarya, have you not found you are speaking to Aishwarya? Bhaag Aishwarya, bhaag! You have forgotten she's paid three crores to act like this and Amrish Puri is paid one crore to act like this. But he gets so involved. Bhagna! And supposing Gulshan Grover is saying, Abhi nahi udar, nahi udar, mancha udar, wo khala hai. Gulshan, kya? For the rest of your life, you don't forget that movie. 25 years later on, you see one scene and you say, Hey, who's the number one guy in movie? Because you were? And sometimes if you are unfortunate, you take somebody who is totally passive. You are so involved, actually that is Paisa Vasuli. And this fellow immediately says, Hey, popcorn chila hua hai. You feel like murdering that fellow. You were so involved, you were crying, and you felt so nice, and you come and tell people also, That fellow wastes everything. So if you really want to go to see a movie, take somebody who can practice. Involved listening over there. Don't take these passive butterflies. Keep them on a home, throw them in some garden. You really want to enjoy it, take somebody who can be involved. Life is all about involvement. Listening is all about involvement. Relationships are all about involvement. And how involved I am with somebody chosen, how much do I want to listen to them? You know, unfortunately, many parents practice only passive listening with their children. Yes. Yes. Child says, Papa, what is it? हाँ बोल बोल एंड इस बात में मंदला है पापा सुनो ना नहीं मैं सुन रहा काम से सुनता हूँ बेटा बोल ना काम से ये काम कर रहा है इस व्हाट इस पैसिव और एक्टिव एब्सोल्युटली पैसिव एंड ऑब्वियसली दे डोंट इवन रियलाइज यू नो ऑन इडियट टीवी वन एड यूज्ड टू कम द डॉटर इस सेइंग मैं ड्राइवर के साथ भाग � Involved with the TV and passes with the daughter. The driver was involved with the daughter, hence they had a great relationship. And then tomorrow you wonder, who is no school? What is the school? What is the school? What is the school? Involved. If somebody else was more involved in their life, they would have had options. Nobody else was more involved, so they slipped. So they slipped. 
the fault is in the existing relationships in life where nobody cares enough to be involved as listeners. If you ever go to old age home, all that they want is can somebody practice inward listening and they become alive. We are too busy with our ego or false preferences, meaningless preferences. And in the process, we are not involved with people where we should be. You should not take home the pressure of your work to your home. Then you are a bad professional. If you are a good professional, you walk out of your office and your office is behind you. Because if you take your office to your home, you will be passive with everybody at home. And people for whom you are working are actually people at home. But they get the passive view. What's the point? Relationships are built by we being involved listeners. Only when we are involved listeners, we can understand the other person's point of view. Otherwise, you cannot understand. Otherwise, you will have an opinion of the other person's point of view, not have the truth about the other person's point of view. So how to listen? You cut yourself from everything and focus on that child. And you will be able to get the best for the child only in those circumstances. Otherwise the world pretends. Somebody who is the naughtiest boy in the child does not like to be that way but that is the only way he gets attention. And somebody who becomes involved with that child, a teacher who gets involved with the child can take that child away from that zone called mischief monger and bring them properly into a performance. There are hundreds of stories of stars, athletes, businessmen, artists, where they were rejected by the whole world, including their family and their classroom, known for their notoriety. But a teacher came along could see in the child what others are blind to. She got involved with that child, showed to the child what he is capable of, sometimes directed the child in everything else is history. I was with a colleague of mine, Prashant, yesterday. We had gone to Nasik and Sinner. All of you will be glad to know, yesterday we had a program in Nasik, where there were about 1,000 teachers, and all of them corporation school teachers. And uh, we, are, we are blessed to have some people who are really interested in education. The education officer of Nasik is a guy called Nitin Upasani. He changed the school timing of every school. The school used to function from 10 to 3. He made it 12 to 5. And 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. we had a two-hour interaction with about 1,000 teachers in Nasik. And fantastic it was. In the evening, we were in a place called Sinner, which is about 30-35 kilometers from Nasik, a very, very small town, not a very big town. And how many teachers there? Almost 1,100 teachers. Teachers from all over the district had come, some traveling for three hours, four hours. They had come in buses, they had come in trucks. 1,100 odd teachers. There also, the entire district school times had been changed. The MLA, the MP, the corporators, all of them got together and said, let's change it for this evening. We had the program in the evening from 3 to 5. Now these are involved. Was it easy? Not at all. The mayor of Nasik did not give permission. So what did Mr. Nitin do? He changed the dates, which means change of permission is required. And he said, I forgot to invite the mayor. Yeah. <laughs> he said, sir, I forgot. And eight days in advance, we have finalized everything, which means he remembered to forget. <laughs> and then, of course, he told, sir, you have bigger priorities in life. Kya, sir, aap ye sab chute -chute 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 -chute. 
I'm the Mary Lotto Happy. This is what involvement can do. We have a center over here called St. Felix. One of our volunteers, whose name is Durya, Durya Shiv Chandler, she lost her father, but she was there in the program. I was not anticipating her. As I walked towards the hall, I found Durya standing over there, eyes full popped up. I said, Durya, I didn't expect you. After she broke down into tears and she said, but I am a life schooler. I have given my commitment, I will be there for this program. How can I miss? And my teachers will be coming from my school, so I have to coordinate with them. This world is created by people who are involved. And when Durya shows this kind of an involvement in the program, when Nitin Upasni and Nasik shows this kind of an involvement in the program, my relationship with them has become 10 times stronger by a small experience which lasts probably 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Involvement can create magic. <laughs> Being passive does nothing but push people away. The children in your class need a little involved listening from you. Prashant, who has organized this program in Nasik, shared with me that until my 8th standard, I used to be the 3rd or 2nd in the class from behind. 2nd <laughs> last or 3rd last. He said I would scrape through 35%. In 8th standard, I just had a drawing teacher who said your drawing is good. And in every class, she will come and stand behind me. And the moment I complete my drawing, she will just pat my back and she will go. Remember last session we discussed about Making children feel important. Do you remember that? Yes. Same M for make people feel important. Prashant was saying that's what the teacher did. First I started coming first in drawing. 10th standard, he was 12th in the old school. 12th standard, he was second in his own college. Today he's a top class architect and he's won three international awards in architecture. That boy, till 7th standard final exams, was second or third from behind. What did the teacher do? Get involved. Not too many words spoken. Communication is not all about talking. It's also about observing, it's about getting involved. And a little pack which does all the talking. And we have a world renowned architect. I don't know whether the teacher even realizes the power of that pack. But that's what it can do. The teacher listened by involvement, not through the ears, but through the eyes. You want to build relationships through the eyes, through the ears, get involved. After listening is thinking. So when you're thinking, you often think to understand the other person's point of view. Why is this person behaving in this way? If I have to get the person out, what is it that I need to do? Is there a better approach? Say for example, I go home and my little daughter, Meh, is unconsolable. She's crying. She's telling me, Papa, I missed writing answers for three marks in the maths paper. She is crying and crying and crying because she missed writing answers for three marks. What is logic? Jandena. That's logic. But human beings are not a product of logic. We are products of? I know fully well, if Mehek's friend had done the same thing, Mehek would have told her friend, Chodna, agle exam me thik se kar lena. But she is a product of emotions. She needs somebody to listen to her. As I look at her, I think, what does she need right now? Does she need a solution or does she need somebody's help to help her to cry out? So I just take her and say, you feel like crying? She says, no, Papa, attempting to be brave, but actually that's what she wants. 
So I just take it, it's okay, come close to Papa. And then she howls and starts crying for three, four minutes. Her grandmother comes in and says, Kya hua? Kya lag gya? Kya? Mein aara, paanch minute, mein aapro gya hua. And I'm thinking, what does she need right now? Does she need a hug right now or does she need one lecture? What do you think she needs? That's all. She cries for about two, three minutes. And then she says, oh sorry, I spoiled your shirt. Because she has rented it off, now she's relaxed. And now I ask her, Mommy, go bola kya? She said, hi, I told mama. Mama said, why are you crying? You are always crying. You are a crying baby. <laughs> and she swaps. Suddenly from sorrow, she's moved to anger now. Why well, mommy says like this? And then she looks at me and says, Papa, you are the best in the world. <laughs> now I wonder what my wife will tell me in the night. <laughs> At the cost of being a good husband, I have become a great father. <laughs> then she goes to play and I ask Bharti, the kids crying, does it create turbulence in you? So, kya chode -chode baat hai, log rote rate. Does she need a lecture or does she need somebody to listen to her rent? Right? At that point of time, let's say one of you calls and I tell Bharti, eight minute, huh? and I talk to her, she will think, this guy loves his daughter, does not love his wife. So I'm thinking, what is to be done? And I ask her, does it give you pain? Does it make you feel frustrated? Did I do the right thing? Next time, what should we do? And I'm thinking, before talking, let me think. So communication is first about listening. What kind of listening? Your listening. Then comes thinking. Don't talk yet, first think. And then talk. How will you take a printout without typing something? It's almost like taking a printout and then saying, Achha nahi hai. <laughs> So first thing, what to talk? And talk in a way by which I can take care of their emotions as well as logic. And then I talk. Talking involves two parts. What I say and how I say. Talking involves two parts. What I say and how I say. So the matter is also important. And the tone is also important. Both are important. What are they searching for when I talk? Respect. Talking is never good if it is deprived of respect. You want to build great relationships? The tone has to be of respect. I will never disrespect anybody. You can never find me disrespecting anybody. And we are running a big program. So it's not just what you say. Don't go by the logic of your communication. How you say the tone is equally important. What they feel from you is so crucial because we are products of emotions. And then of course, The end of it comes doing. Doing also comprises two parts. What I do and how I do. So what I say, how I say, what I do, how I do. Which means if I tell you the program will begin at 3, does it begin at 3? Now this is doing. How I do? Was there class? Was it fluid? Was it smooth? Was there quality? Now all this is involved in the action. So if I give you a promise, do I live by that promise? Or is it I deliver less than what I promised? What builds relationships is, whatever I say, I do. <coughs> so let's say the management of VIT promises us that this hall is going to be available for all these sessions of Keep Moving Home. What they said and what they did, does it match? Listen to me carefully. I can find reasons to escape from my commitments. And it can be very logical reasons. So if I am the management of VIT, I can say, Yeah, Narin, I was not in the bus. I had to give him a phone to him. He was very tired. 
it is not what I say, what I said earlier and what I did. I might still say, ha, there is reason, hai, but now I don't respect you anymore. Respect is gone. And if respect is not there, it's a dead body. Two things very crucial in relationships, trust and respect. She is to write trust and respect. If I trust you but I don't respect you, there will be some people like that. Relationships can't be built. I respect you but I don't trust you. Again relationships cannot be built. So what I do and how I do? You told me what you will do is give the all. Then I don't give the all. Whatever be your reason, my respect for you is gone. So tell this to children. When you say I'll do this work tomorrow and come. When you don't do it and come, I might still love you, but my respect for you will be a little down. And when a person like Durya comes, my respect for her shoots up. Shoots up like crazy. Now that is what builds a relationship. What I do and how I do. So what actually builds a relationship? If you want to develop a relationship with a person, what you need to do? One, I will be a contributor and not a consumer. Two, there will be fantastic communication. Fantastic communication involves those four things. Listening, thinking, talking, and doing. In listening, it will be like word listening. Repeat it, repeat it. Listening, thinking, talking, and doing. Listening will be what kind of listening? Involved listening. Do write down what there all the three varieties. Passive, active, and involved. Thinking has to be positive towards solutions, other person's point of view. That's what thinking is all about. Keeping in mind, people are not products of logic. People are products of so you have to address the logic as well as the emotions. Addressing the logic and rubbishing the emotions will not develop the relationship. Only addressing the emotions, not taking the logic, you will not be able to guide the person. Hence addressing both logic as well as emotions is required. First address the emotions and then the logic. This is the rule. First, you need to take care of the emotions. Only then, the other person is in a listening frame of mind. They are willing to change where change is required. And then, of course, is talking. Talking is about what I say and how I say. So I can say, come here. And I can say, come here. What I say is the same. How I say is very, very different. So I can tell somebody, Buddha, I'm love girls. I get the pyaar se Buddha. And the same thing with anger, Buddha. And the relationship gets spoiled. So it's not just what I say, how I say. If you want practice this tonight at home, <laughs> tell your spouse with a lot of love. <laughs> See, he'll feel electricity at that time. <laughs> and he might say, Amko to wo zamana yaad aagaya. And then you say, Ari Narin, iske baat to bataya nahi. It's not what you say, but also how you say which is so crucial, which we ignore so many times. 
He wants to build relationships. How I say is as important, if not more important, than what you say. And last, of course, is anxious. How, what you do and how you do. Based on what you said, what do you do and how do you do. No excuses will be tolerated. If you have said something, it must be done. These things builds a relationship. When our kids in the class know to take these approaches to build relationships, you will find they are developing an aspect of life by which even if they are ordinary performers, they will have extraordinary results in life later on. You would have seen some people, uh, wherever they go, they can get things done, they can raise the resources. Say so for example, traveling in a train, now you don't have reservations. You will find there are some people who always know how to get a reservation. And there are some people waiting list 1 never gets confirmed. <laughs> and there are some who waiting list is 233. Yet with that confidence, they say, What is their confidence about? Indian railways. <laughs> their ability to build relationship with that one man who can make things happen and that is the PT. <laughs> you know when we leave school and we go to this world, it's no more about the performance on that answer sheet which matters. It's about my ability to build and nurture relationships. So who am I? Well, fuck. But if I have an ability to build relationships, we have such a beautiful team of people who are working together to make things happen. Many people have much more wealth than I have. Some of them have greater charisma than what I have. Some of them have fantastic education, much more than I have. But I also have one thing which is so crucial and that is the ability to build genuine relationships in life. So even when I don't have so much, they cease to be important and I can still live a life of my dreams. Some children in the class, their future is through education. They will study, they will become top grade lawyers, top grade doctors, top grade management people, top grade engineers. In a class of 50, probably 10 such people will have a future through studies. Even they, for their development, need great relationships. Some of you would have gone to doctors where you see the doctor and you feel you are already okay. <laughs> Has it happened to you? Yes. Some doctors you go there and you feel in their presence. Are you empty with that? And there are some doctors where you wonder, Bimari Aati Kyu. You feel like running away from there. Both have studied the same MBBS. One knows how to build relationships. That's how an MBBS past Dr. Grant can create Ruby Hall. And there are some doctors with their degree are struggling in the corner shop with one tupper on top, 50 rupees they are still signing <coughs> and collecting after a hard day's work probably 600, 800 thousand rupees back home. And that guy every day can take up 5 lakh rupees from his system. He knows how to build a team. He knows how to generate resources through great relationships. Most of these children will not have a future in academics. Honestly, I'm telling this to you. But all of them will have a brilliant future if they can create relationships. That's the key. Hence, this session is so crucial. How to ensure we don't get disappointed in relationships? That's the next question. How to ensure you don't get disappointed in relationships? How will you ensure you don't get disappointed in relationships? By not having great expectations. Okay, by reducing expectations. Okay, that's one. What else? By being selfless. By being selfless, okay. That uh, I feel that Nishkama Karba, you say. Absolutely. That I'm, I'm not interested in getting. 
I will do what I can exactly. to help, then I don't get disappointed. Absolutely. Now these are good ideas, but for most people, they find it difficult to implement this. Not many of us have reached that stage where we can say we can actually practice Nishkankar, selfless deeds. Most of us are still longing to get when we give. We have not yet reached the stage where we can give and not expect anything. Though that's the ideal stage. But that is not where we are. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right or wrong? Yes. Even then, how do I ensure I don't get disappointed in relationships? I do, do I do my best, let him do their best, if things work out great, otherwise I continue. Something like that? Fair enough, what else? It's a little complicated question, maybe something on which we have never thought. We just pray some things go away and set itself right. But there are these things which we need to discuss. But this is an everyday life situation. Yes. Every day it takes place. Exactly. So what to do now? Keep trying. Okay, that's one option. Keep trying. Keep doing your best. Give Keep your best. Keep doing my best. Okay. Keep then. moving. Keep moving. <laughs> Good. Positive attitude. Positive attitude. Positive like in how? What do I think in that positive moment? What to do when I'm already disappointed in relationships? Let's say somebody has already hurt me and gone. How to face that situation? Keep ignorant. on loving that person, okay? He was ignorant, so ignorant, he has been okay. Leave that aside. Leave that aside. Leave that aside. No. Communicate. Communicate. So, hurt I have created, that is my responsibility, not somebody else's. Not somebody else's responsibility. Hope for the best for them. Hope for the best for them. So, also to okay. think that that person hasn't got enough love in life. Quite possible. So I will, I will go on loving. Absolutely. My role is to give. Doesn't me matter. Even if she has spoken to me rudely, I won't show that I'm. Beautiful. Yes. Which means forgiveness. Yeah. Hmm? Yes. Hate the sin. Love the sinner. Give Fair enough. Give support to words by your actions. Give support to words by my actions. How do I do that, Shilpa? Okay, fair enough. Do something special and start the relationship all over again. Accept a person with all his bads and goods. Accept a person with all his bads and goods. Okay. Now let me give you my bit to the entire discussion. <laughs> Listen. There is something called self-analysis. What is the objective of self-analysis? Now I'll tell you what is my conviction and so often this has helped me to deal with situations. When somebody hurts me, one part of the story is he hurt me, the other part of the story is I was hurtable. Which means emotionally I was not strong enough. When somebody cheats me, one part of the story is he cheated me, second part of the story is I was cheatable. Which means intellectually I was not strong enough. Why blame him? When a part of the fault lies with me. You know in the Quran it is written, trust Allah but tie the camel. If I am staying in a tent, the camel cannot stay with me inside the tent. So the camel has to be kept outside. There is no point in saying, Inshallah and leave the camel. Well, the camel will go away in the night. Tomorrow I can't say this is Inshallah and be very happy about it. Trust Allah. But tie the camel. Which means use analysis and find out the camel went away not because it was his will, because it, that is his way of giving me for my idiosity. I should have been smart enough to tie the camel. And that's what I need to learn when I do an analysis. Yes, one part of the story is I was cheated, I was hurt, but the other part of the story is I was cheatable and I was hurtable. Let me work on myself and improve myself. It is not just about him or her. It is equally about me and mine. There will always be instances in life that there will be difference of opinion, that there will be gap of understanding, and somebody will not treat you the way you believe you should be treated. It will always happen, like she said, may not be every day, but consistently this will happen in our life. And so often with people who are extremely close to us. One of those rare times, people with whom we believe it's a relationship of a lifetime. 
and yet something happens and everything snaps. Easiest thing of course is to blame somebody else. But the right thing will be to analyze. What in you gave them the permission to believe they can do this and get away with it? I have crores of rupees in the house and if I don't lock the door, the thieves are going to come and take. There's no point in blaming the thieves. I should have taken care. Which means, I understand that person who hurts me, who cheats me, is his representative who has come to teach me it's time for me to become better and stronger. He is a representative. Today, a few of my friends came up on the dais and told all of you, teachers have done so much good. We have a lot of gratitude for the teachers. Teachers are also his representative in my life. He wanted me to grow in life, hence he sent good teachers. Some of his lessons will happen in a way which is acceptable to me, delightful to me. Some of his lessons will happen in ways that are not acceptable to me, a little pain to me, but he knows why he gives me what he gives me. <coughs> so always remember this, even if you don't believe in God, if you believe only in psychology, there is something which is a weakness inside me which got exploited. It's not that person. It's the weakness which got exploited. Law of life. Weakness will always get exploited. How did the Britishers rule this country? Because they were not united, the kings. Our weakness? Yes. We were not united. Weakness got exploited. You can fault the Britishers or you can learn and make yourself so united, nobody in the world exploits you tomorrow. Have you heard this? History repeats itself? Yes. When history repeats itself, when we did not learn from our mistakes, only then history repeats itself. Otherwise, history will not repeat itself. Have you heard this Hindi ka kahavat? Badi machli? Kyo? Usko choti machli se koi bear nahi hai. No, there is that thing. All the choti machli got together and then he could not follow. Which means the choti machlis are not weak anymore. When the choti machli was weak, the badi machli gobbles up the choti machli. So it's not just about human beings. Anything in creation. Anybody over here, geography teacher? So where does the volcano happen? Where the crust of the earth is? Weak. Which means it's not just about living things. Anything in this world, if there is a weakness, the law of life is weakness will get exploited. So sometimes in relationships when I am hurt or people don't treat me the right way, It's my time to understand that there's a weakness within me. And as long as I remain weak, today this person, tomorrow that person, day after tomorrow somebody else will come and exploit this weakness of mine. So you want to develop relationships, develop relationships as a strong person, as a weak person, you will always go through a lot of pain. Be strong. It can be something as simple as, I am too dependent on my wife for certain things. I am very insecure. My life is my wife. Let's say I make this statement wanting to tell you how much I love my wife. She is my life. She is a very important part of my life. If I say she is my life, then she has become my weakness. Tomorrow I will become a puppet in her life because I will always be scared and therefore not able to do what is right. Understand this relationship. If you are weak, your weakness can be your anger. Your weakness can be your fears. Your weakness can be a sense of insecurity. Your weakness can be poor self-image. 
So it's never about people, it's never about others. It's always about something which is not okay in me. So there is a child in your class and everybody makes fun of the child. Everybody else is not cruel, he is weak. So you don't tell the child, don't make fun of this child. You call the child and ask, why are you not becoming stronger? And if you don't become strong, even if you shift the school, in that school somebody will find that you are weak and they will exploit you. The law of life, weakness will always be exploited and in case you go through troubled relationships, it is your time to analyze, to find out what is your weakness and work on it. If my specs is dirty, the whole world looks unclean to me. And I don't have all the surf in the world to clean the whole world. I have to clean my specs and everything in the world is beautiful again. So when things are not going right, it's perfect time for me to analyze to find out what in me requires rectification. Rectify that, move back to the earlier point, how to develop relationships, become a co contributor, not a consumer, and things will start on the right path again. So fundamentally this entire session is a few points. Point number one, importance of relationships. Some people will have a future through studies, but even if they don't have, they need to have great relationships. Point number two, I can't change people without their cooperation. Point number three, people are not products of logic, we are all products of emotions. Point number four, how to develop deep relationships. There, be a contributor and not just a consumer. There, communication through those four different sub-points again. Let me listen, let me think, let me talk, and let me act. And when things are not going good in relationships, let's say somebody has hurt me and gone, instead of keeping that hurt or developing hatred, all I need to do is understand, he was a medium who had come to teach me that something is incomplete about me, I have a weakness. Part one of the story is somebody cheated me, part two of the story is the more important part is, I was cheatable. So I work on myself, make myself strong, and go back to relationships, wanting to be a contributor and not just a consumer. Which is the relationship to follow? Ideally find somebody who is as interested in contributing in your life as much you are interested in doing in your life. That will be the ideal relationship. Anybody who is interested only in consuming, now that relationship is not the right relationship of your life. If the kids can understand this and if you can understand that, a lot of peace will be there in your life. And those little niggles that you have inside because some experiences are not good, I pray with this understanding that weakness got exploited, you will be able to remove the pain associated to your past and become peaceful again. This can be a life-changing session for you to take. Because when you talk about the last part that we just discussed, it should come with authority, having dealt with your life, in a similar way. And if you can communicate this to children inside the classroom, I'm very sure many of them will not go through breakdowns. They will be pushed, but they will not stay pushed. They will come back on their feet again. You know, every year in BJ Medical, a few people commit suicide. 99.2, 99.3 is cut off marks. Brilliant when it comes to logic. <coughs> Emotionally, they are weak. They thought the only way out is suicide. If you can save one or two of the children who might be there in the class with you right now, they might go on to become ace doctors and that is what the country needs. You will teach them how to deal with people and that is as important as how to deal with the subjects that you are teaching to them inside the classroom. Thanks for your time. Love you so much. And have a